Hey guys, what's going on? So today's video is about really cooling down your van. How to cool it down? Is it necessary for an air conditioner? What are some other ways to cool down a van without an air conditioner? All of that I'm going to go over in this entire video. So stay tuned for all of the tips and trades that I have right now. My office is seriously lacking right now. Not much going on. If you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing. My name is Jared Tachi, which is also the name of the channel. What I do here is everything tiny living related. I lived in a van for a little over three years. I've been doing a, a just over four years of van life research and development and designing. And I've immersed myself into this world. And really, I love what I do. This is go out and I seek out companies and I do tours, many vlogs like this. I also have a lot of fun entertainment vlogs. But really I try to give as much information that I have gained over all these years uh, to everybody here that wants to, to know more. I am not in a van right now, as you probably can tell, because I am going to be transitioning from van life to tiny living. However, with that being said, I will always have a van or an adventure vehicle with me at all times. Currently, I have a Jeep Gladiator that I'm making into an overland rig. And then I hope to eventually have a plot of land with container homes or a container home for me and then tiny dwelling as well as vans and even maybe my Jeep at that point. So that's really my whole story. Uh, but I've also built two vans, one on a very lower budget and then one on a very higher budget. So I do have a lot of experience in this field and I also, like I said, I also lived in a van for many years. Enough about me, let's talk about what this video is about, which is cooling down a van. Why would you listen to me? My first van um, did not have a lot of ventilation and I built it completely stealth and hence the name Ghost. But that first van I lived two years in, in the wonderful city of Los Angeles, a little bit of sarcasm there. It got hot in the summertime and I had to find a way to stay cool with the one roof fan that I had, no windows. And then my second van, a lot nicer. I chased a little more weather with my second van. In the summertime, I was actually building out the van, kind of, and then I moved over to Portland, uh, which is a little bit cooler than the South or uh, SoCal or places like that. It still got hot, but it was a lot more manageable. So I was chasing weather, which a lot of van lifers will do. And then eventually went on and installed a 12 volt air conditioner into my second van, which I got to use uh, not enough, to be honest with you. I wanted to use it more. But I ended up selling that van and I've talked to the owners quite often and they absolutely love it. I've also looked into many other air cooling systems and air conditioners. We're gonna pretty much work from the, from the bottom up. What I mean from the bottom is like, I don't wanna spend a lot of money and how the heck do I cool my van down? First and foremost, in regards to cooling down a metal shell <laughs> that has the sun beating down on it because we like our solar panels to charge our batteries, how do we keep that area cool? Insulation is probably one of the most important things of your van build, which so many people mess up, and I need to do a complete separate video on that. However, I'm gonna be releasing an ebook very soon, and why did it take me four years to release an ebook? Because I wanted it done right. Anyways, your insulation is extremely important. The, one of the most important things of the insulation is creating a thermal break. So you want to make sure that you create a thermal break from that metal to the inside air. Also, because there's no way around this in a van, moisture is going to build up. So you want to have mold proof or moisture proof or moisture repellent type materials. Havelock wool, shout out to Havelock, that's what I use. They absorb moisture and they will not mold. Not rock wool. Rock wool is a mineral wool. I highly recommend not using rock wool. That's just me. Thinsulate, which is also mold proof, I guess. And then foam board uh, or polyiso board, which is also mold proof. You can also do spray foam. I don't like using spray foam inside of a van for many different reasons. Number one, rodents like it. And number two, it can warp the size of your van if, if, if not done correctly. Again, this is not an insulation video, but insulation does go hand in hand with cooling or heating your van. So I have to talk a little bit about it. The next thing I wanna talk about is cross ventilation. Cross ventilation is exactly what it sounds like. It is a breeze coming from here to here, crossing or here to here, roof, crossing path to get to 
to to to kind of let air flow through your your van i guess so many people have lived many many years without having an air cooling or air conditioning system so why is that any different inside of a van again this goes back to having a thermal break with your insulation if you don't want windows and you want to remain stealth although there is no real thing as stealth anymore but still they're stealth whatever we're not hiding from people that actually know we're hiding from the people that don't know whatever that's all stealth in a nutshell if you want to not have windows which a lot of people have been contacting me of recent and by the way i do consultations but a lot of people have contacted me of recent and they said that they want to have no windows fine i highly recommend having two roof fans if you're going to not have any windows this again goes back to having a roof configuration that you can fit solar panels roof fence or even an air conditioner we're going to get to later all of that takes into effect there's many ways to obviously get cross ventilation two windows three windows many windows roof fan windows as long as air can flow through there it's easier to cool down the van is it necessary to have two fans no is it necessary to have a fan and a window no can you get away without not having any fans and windows yeah i don't like that idea but yes, you could. You won't, no, you won't, you won't survive in there, I don't think. So it's probably not a good idea. Do you not need a fan at all? You actually technically don't need a fan. You can get away with it. Uh, I had, in my first van, I did not have any windows and I only had a roof fan. In the summertime in Los Angeles, what did I do during those really, really hot times? Well, I either drove out to Malibu, uh, which is the ocean, if you guys are unfamiliar with that, or Santa Monica for that matter and I tried to be by the ocean or the beach you get that cool breeze. It's like a 20 degree drop from there than it is more inland or in the valley. Again, that goes back to like chasing the weather, but if you don't have that option, if you're in a different city that doesn't have oceans or something along those lines, what do you do? I also tell a lot of my clients, if you're getting into van life, the point of getting into van life is to actually be outside right? We want to be out enjoying nature or we want to be out enjoying, we, we want to go out and enjoy life, pretty much what it comes down to. But is there times where you need to be in your van during the daytime? Yes. Are there times that it gets hot at night? Yes. So how do you cool that down? Proper insulation, cross ventilation, and then I'm going super cheap and I actually don't like these methods, <laughs> but I did use them. You can get one of those Arctic airs, which my goodness, they don't help whatsoever. Obviously fans, Arctic airs, Arctic air is pretty much like a swamp cooler. If, if somebody's familiar with that, they just blow cold air. It's, it's, it's actually hysterical. It's a fan is what it comes down to. And then you pour water in the side of it. They sell them at Home Depot, whatever. Obviously fans, I would highly recommend using uh, USB port fans or battery powered fans. So obviously save you on power. So you could plug in a USB fan into any USB outlet and you probably have them all over your van because they run off a of 12 volt. The Arctic air is my goodness. I don't even, there is no BTU on it because it's, it's not an air conditioner. It is an air cooler. Uh, so there is no BTU on it, which also brings me to my next point of attack. I'm not trying to attack anybody, by the way. There is a company out there right now. I've actually talked to them. I know I've talked to the CEO. I've talked to one of their sales reps. Uh, they're actually a fantastic company for what they do. However, how do I put this? For what it is, I don't feel that it's right for van life. I think that what they do with their golf carts is spot on uh, and maybe some other things, which is called Fres Air. I do like the company themselves. I like like who they are and their motto and all that stuff. However, uh, there is, <laughs> I don't like bashing people, but there is another van life couple pushing this Fres Air a lot. And there's a lot of misguided information about the Fres Air, or at least what they're saying about the Fres Air. Take a look at the website. The Fres Air is an air cooling system. There is no Freon. Freon is a liquid that is in an air conditioner. Simple, right? Instead of Freon, they actually use uh, water tanks. It is a higher end swamp cooler. What happens is there's a reservoir or a water tank pumps up the wall and the, the fresh air itself, the unit is actually a roof mount unit. And then that actually cools the, the water and then blows that air down into your space. It's like putting a bag of ice in front of a fan. That's, that's how the best way that I can describe it. Again, that's what Arctic Air does, but Fres Air is a very large Arctic Air. Do I like it? No, I don't particularly think it's a great idea for an air cooling system inside of a van. For what they do with golf carts and other uh, things that they do, I think it's great. I personally would rather spend my money on the other things I'm about to talk about, but that's just me. I've lived in a van and I know how hot it can get. Uh... 
videos like this, I need a lot of coffee. All right, so before I go into the other air conditioners that are on the market right now, I am only gonna really talk about the 12 volt air conditioners because I don't feel that it's necessary to even consider a wall mount or a 120 volt air conditioner. The way that you would mount it would be a little interesting on how it would be get how it would get done. It draws way too much power. You need to have your inverter on and you have to have it plugged in and it just it draws way too much power. Now there's going to be a lot of people that are going to argue with me on this on this point. I've seen them in action and in the short term it can work. In the long term, it's not gonna work because it, it will drain your batteries over time. Plain and simple, I don't know how else to say that. Which brings me to the power system is an investment for your air conditioner. I had 400 amp hours of lithium batteries in my van. That was enough for me. To be very comfortable, I would say 600 amp hours. If anybody knows math, they know what a lithium battery costs and times six, that can get really expensive between five to $6,500 just in batteries. I've seen people run air conditioners off of 300 amp hours. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm saying to be comfortable so you don't have to watch your your gauges all that much or your percentage of your batteries all that much. Making sure that you're taking care of power wise is very important if you're gonna want to have an air conditioner. Again, you can get away with it having 200, 300, 400 amp hours, I'm just saying comfortability power wise. Having a 12 volt AC, you don't need to have your inverter turned on. The four best ones on the market that I know of, I'm gonna start from the lowest to the highest, are zero breeze and then these two are like number two and three they're kind of next to each other the nomadic king tech and then cruise and comfort i think is the rolls royce of 12 volt air conditioners i had it in my van so i'm a little biased towards it however i also feel like it is worth the money and it's worth it in the end the zero breeze is nice the zero breeze is a unit that is uh you plug into usb it runs off a of 12 volt the btu on it is about 2500 2600 give or take i could be a little off on that but it's right around that maybe 2200 amperage draw is not that much the problem with that amount of btus it can cool down pretty much the size of a queen bed space why did i compare the space to a bed because we want to sleep comfortably so if you are just trying to take the edge off of while you sleep, the Zero Breeze it could be a good alternative. Again, the BTUs just aren't up to par with those other ones I'm about to mention. I don't know the Nomadic all that well, uh, although I've, I've been to their website several times. It looks like it's very on par with the King Tech system. I think King Tech is great. Their customer service is great. I have yet to call Nomadic. However, their specs look very much hand in hand with each other. Uh, the size looks roughly the same. Uh, looks like they have two condenser fans on top, each of them. The two of those are both roof mounts. The Zero Breeze is more a portable unit. You also have to think uh, what you're gonna have up on your roof, those big solar panels and or a roof vent, think about that. I have a couple friends installing King Techs right now. I can't wait to actually see them installed. I believe they are good units. Uh, I believe they're both, the King Tech and the Nomadic are right around 8,500 BTUs. You can probably play with the settings a little bit. 8,500 BTUs is enough to cool down a 144 Sprinter. It's going to be pushing it on a 170 Sprinter. A 159 Pro Master is right on that edge. A 136 Pro Master, absolutely. Those are right around the, the spaces that you can get away with having one of those units. Is the King Tech, the Nomadic, and the Cruising Comfort going to be noisy? It's going to create noise, but it's not going to be noisy. <laughs> I don't like I, I did a video a little while back about the cruise and comfort and people were like it's too noisy it's an air conditioner it's not noisy it was just my mic picking up the fans that were on hello they're fans you can also change that I can guarantee you you can change it on all three units the cruise and comfort you can absolutely change that on you can change how you wire it and you can change it on your settings on your keypad that, that, that you can get your control panel hello I'm assuming you can do that with the King Tech and the Nomadic. I really hope that you can. I am here with my boy Jason right now from Off Grid Solutions. He has this toy that is a flare gun. Right there, we're almost 90 degrees on the paint. That's in the shade. 97. 97, 98, 100. Seven. We're going inside right now. Had this sitting for about an hour now with the AC cranking. Completely not plugged in. Completely not plugged <laughs> yeah. in. We have not gone into this van. What's it reading? 
definitely in the 70s look you can oh, even see the awesome. heat you can see the heat coming through all the windows yeah. uh-huh from your window coverings i really like to use this little flare, flare gun to see Absolutely. you know where we're getting our heat where we're getting our insulation loss so that thing is pumping out at 45 degrees 77 according to that thermostat which is the van life tech thermostat 88 10 percent of batteries for an hour of ac is not a bad so it's running at 47 amps. It's actually less than that because I got these on. I got the LEDs on. Just under 40 amps. It feels great in here. How are you feeling here? I don't want to get out. <laughs> I gotta go back to work now. I want to segue just a little bit into the Cruise and Comfort. The Cruise and Comfort, I feel, again, is the Rolls Royce or the upper echelon of the, the way to cool down a van. Number one. It's not a roof mount. The condenser, the fans are under mount, which is really cool. The company has several contracts with big corporations. So obviously they know what they're doing. So they know this field. They know exactly what they're doing. Is it a higher price point? Yes. Is it worth it? Absolutely. If you want to remain stealth, having an undermount is really nice. If you want more roof space, having an undermount is really nice. The unit inside is a little large. So you have to kind of configure what you want in there. I don't know the dimensions off the top of my head. And then you run your own ducting, which means you can run that ducting anywhere you want inside of your van. Obviously with, an, with a cooling system, you want that duct to run as high up as possible so it will drop the air down. I prefer to have any type of ducting or anything AC related near a bed because again, you wanna be comfortable while you sleep. You're sleeping between six to eight to 10 hours, whatever you sleep. You wanna be comfortable. You don't wanna be waking up all night all sweaty and gross, peeling sheets off of you. So you wanna just make sure that you're comfortable. Duh. I'm trying to get as much information out to everybody as possible. And I know that this is a topic that I could literally have an hour long video on but the attention spans of people are much less these days. So I'm only going to, I'm trying to shorten my informational vlogs to a shorter amount of time for everybody to understand where I'm coming from. I hope this information was at least getting you aware so you can start doing your own research. With that being said, I think it is a great idea, not just to listen to me, but to take pieces from everybody and then make your own decisions from that. I have told all of my clients to say, when they ask me a question, I will give them an answer and I will say, but double check it. Because I feel like I am not the end all be all answer to anything. Take some opinions from others, just don't get the fresh air. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, but really I'm not. Oh man, I should have done that. I'm going to try and answer as many comments as possible, but if you would like to book a consultation with me through my website, you're more than happy to do that. And I'm gonna be starting something really, really, really soon to help a lot of DIYers out. Again, it will be sort of like an ebook, but there is going to be an ebook as well. So please go to jaratachi.com if you guys have any more questions, uh, concerns, uh, or if you just wanna send me some love, shoot me an email and say, cool, Great seeing you, buddy. <laughs> now, a lot of things happening up in the future. I've got a lot more tours coming. I've got my adventure rig or my overland rig being built out uh, by me. I haven't given up on that land search, guys. For the people that have been loyal followers and have wondered where I've been, I have not given up on that land search. The land will be coming. I just don't know when and where, but it will be coming. The container home will be coming, and I hope to build a tiny house, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> Uh, so if you did stay to the end of the video, you got a little teaser of what the next year of my life is going to entail. So guys, please give the video a like, also subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. Later!